Welcome to 304 Customs Garage. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our street and strip suspension on the S10 once again. There's some things we're going to change about it. I'm going to show you why I changed it, what I'm going to use to change, hopefully correct the issue that I believe is going to be a problem, and it'll also give you some thought as to whether or not you want to use one set of parts or the other before you purchase and have to wait on parts and spend the money twice as I did. So, without waiting any longer, let's get started. All right, so if you watched the last video, you'll see that we installed the tubular control arms, the new ball joint, which is similar to a stock size one, and we put a new shock in. Since then, I've went ahead and put the brakes and rotors, and I got the wheels and tires mounted in balance. I'll go ahead and show you those two. 15 by 4 is only 26, 7.5 by 15. But... After putting this stuff together, I noticed that all the shims didn't go back in, and there was no way I was getting those back in. So, something wasn't right quite. These are the Speedway 8-inch arms, and tonight we're going to swap those out for a little bit longer ones, and we're going to go ahead and put a 1-inch taller ball joint in the upper control arm as well. The reason for I'm going to do this is... See if I can get this on camera for you. If you look, the tire leans in at the top on this side. I put a flat piece of metal on the wheel earlier, and I got about three and a half, four degrees of negative camber, which the tire leans in at the top on this side. And then on this side, I'm getting between four and five. I did check it with shims out as well, and it didn't help. It changed it maybe a half a degree or a degree. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and swap the upper control arms and the upper ball joints again. And hopefully that will correct the issue. As you see, this side has a couple shims in it. But over here, we only have little tiny ones. And it was like two or three on each side. I have them laid out still. I know I'm going to have to take it to an alignment shop. But I'll at least get it as close as possible before I take it there. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to swap that with. All right, to get started on our build, we're going to be swapping the eight inch arms out for these Speedway motors with the steel cross shaft as well, eight and a half. The website actually recommends eight inch for an S10, which in most cases, I guess may work for some people, but it's not working on this truck. So we're going to, Go ahead and swap these out to eight and a half, I believe, on an S10 forum or a Facebook group. One of the two that I was reading on, they also recommended using eight and a half for more adjustability. And we're going to swap to the one inch taller ball joint. It's the kind that we're using there. Did get this from Speedway Motors as well. Comes with castle nut washer and a little pin. I hope this will fix the issue. I do know that, like I said before, it needs an alignment and there's no weight on the front. So that will change it as well. But hopefully I can get it as close as possible before I take it to the alignment shop. Well, that's my goal anyway. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this one side off here and we'll start working on it. We'll be right back to you. So I had to run to the hardware store real quick. Got a few bolts. These are a quarter inch by one inch and some nuts and some crush washers. I will note that these ball joints are more of a racing style. So I don't know if I'm going to keep these on here because they don't have boots and running on the street. I don't plan to drive this in bad weather or dirty roads, but there is going to be dirt that contaminates it. So it's going to be recommended that you grease this regularly. Uh, the AFCO ones that they sell do have the boots. Um, Speedway did not have them in stock when I purchased all this stuff and I need to get this truck rolling. So as of right now, we're going to use it without the boot and keep it well greased. Uh, probably will switch later to the AFCO ones again, but we'll go ahead and get this buttoned up and I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. All right, so we got the tire back on. 
need to torque the lug nuts and torque the uh, control arm bolts. But as you can see, first I'll show you this side. See how we have the negative camber here. I do have the wheels cocked a little bit, but as you can see, the tire leans in at the top. And I, I believe this side was like four or five degrees at uh, measuring it. But now, because we installed the Speedway eight and a half upper control arm and the one inch longer ball joint, I was able to get the shims back in the control arm where they came from, from the factory. Of course, it'll need to go to an alignment shop once I get it on the road. But as you can see now, we are parallel. Hopefully it'll save the tires now. That's the idea behind this video. Hopefully it gives you all some reference of using the eight inch arms versus the eight and a halves. I have used both now. For this truck, I had to use the eight and a half. Only other thing I might do differently is change the ball joint to the AFCO one. I feel like greasing that all the time when you want to drive, it's going to be a pain eventually. But it doesn't hurt to check it, so I'll probably run it for a little bit. Maybe this summer, when hopefully if I get this truck on the road, and then this winter we'll swap them out if it lasts that long. Hopefully I don't have any issues with it. But if they would have had the AFCO one, I definitely would have bought that one because of the boot. Other than that, I think it'll be fine. So, what my goal for this video was, was to correct the camber on this truck, and I have done that as of now. Like I said, it does have to go to an alignment shop. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hopefully you're following along on the build. This is the first build I've ever done from the ground up like this. And if you like the videos, let us know. Leave us a comment. Like, dislike if you don't like it. And, well, that'll hopefully wrap things up. You can check out one of these other videos if you'd like. See a little bit of the progress on the truck. I got the motor, suspension, rear to do still. Interior, all that good stuff. And that rat's nest of wires there in front of me. So I'll put those videos up here for you guys to click on. And we'll see you next time. Have a good night.